3D Steve gives Chris a shout out in the video. Oh, I made her day. Hi, I'm Chris from 123 3D. You may have seen online recently, Etsy has made some changes to its policy regarding selling 3D printed products. Back in 2024, Etsy introduced their creative standards, which meant all products listed on the platform had to fall into one of four categories. Made by seller, designed by seller, hand-picked by seller, and sourced by seller. Until now, 3D print sellers have fit into the made by seller category, as stated by Etsy in their creative standards. Etsy have now changed their guidelines and have stated items produced using computerized tools must be produced based on a seller's original design. This has caused concern amongst a lot of 3D print sellers with it sounding like Etsy are essentially banning users from buying a design from somebody and then selling 3D prints of that model. Etsy have since clarified what these changes mean. In a video by Secret Forge on YouTube, Etsy have stated that you can print and sell models providing your listing clearly represents your role in the creation process. So if I was selling models of a design made by somebody else, I would state on my listing designed and licensed by X, 3D printed and processed by me. If you're concerned about your listings being taken down or your store being suspended, Steve has some advice on how you can safeguard your Etsy store. Okay, so... Thanks for this, for the introduction into the new rules that have been implemented by Etsy. What I am going to do now is give you a brief overview of how simple it really is to create your own bespoke items that you can then export as an STL file and sell on Etsy with no problem because this is legitimately your own design. So we shall dive in. I have already opened Fusion 360. Now for those of you who don't know, Fusion 360 is available in a number of different options. I'm using non-commercial license, which is for hobby users because I effectively only ever use it for personal use. I don't use it for making money or anything like that. And so please be sure that you check out the guidance regarding this license to see if it is appropriate. I think you have to hit a certain turnover threshold to become a commercial user. So if you're only making small items and you're not making, you know, any money out of repetitively selling files you should be fine with the non-commercial use license but as i say check it out read the description on it and um, we will leave a link in the description to where you can actually read all the information that you need to know about fusion 360 and how you can get the, the hobby license or a commercial license or educational license whatever license suits your requirements so yeah be sure to check that out right so what I have basically done is I have first off open Fusion. I have created a file name. So it's a simple case of I've literally saved the file name under Dog Coaster. This is only a relatively simple project. It, it would take me no time at all to redo it again. But as things progress and they become more complex, then if your PC or laptop or whatever does crash for any reason, the last thing you want is to lose everything that you've currently got. So save the file and then periodically we'll go through and we'll save at various steps in case there is an accident and we lose everything we can just reload and we start off from where we left off so first thing we need to do is very very simply create a sketch now typically when you load up fusion you'll end up with a, a three-dimensional view like this for simplicity i always go straight to the little box and i click on top so that gives me a, a top-down view. So basically a plan view of the actual workspace. So then I'm going to go up to this little box here, hover my mouse over it, and it simply gives me instructions. Create a sketch because effectively all we are going to do at this point in time is do some drawing. Simple. So I shall click on that and it's highlighted this little plane. Now you can create a sketch on different planes. I'm not going to go into huge detail in this video on the aspects of this. We're going to keep it really, really simple just for you guys to basically follow along. It's dead simple. So I want to create a sketch on the plan plane, so the top plane down. So I shall click my mouse there and it has basically locked the aspect now into the plan view. So all I'm going to do is I am clicking on the circle icon, my little mouse pointer here. It snaps to the middle origin point. So I will put it on there. I will then left click on my mouse drag the circle out and as you can see it's given me a little box there with some dimensions in so i want my coaster to be 100 millimeters because i believe that's a good size for a coaster so i've typed in 100 millimeters into the box hit return the circle is drawn 100 millimeters 
perfecto. I love my dog. So why not drop in an SVG file stating this? It's very, very simple. You can export SVG files into Fusion. And as we all know, it's a, a, a scale vector graphic. So we can scale it to as large as we want without losing any detail or you know increasing the pixel sizes or anything like that. We should click insert. I will find this file from my computer, which is in my downloads. There it is named sleeping dog. So I'll click on that, click OK, dropped it straight in. Now, as you can see, it isn't really the size that we want. So using my mouse wheel, I'll zoom in. And then if you look at this little icon here, if I hover over it, it basically highlights that I can make it smaller. If I drag it out, I can make it larger. As you'll see, I'm dragging it out, making it larger. It's taking it further and further away from the middle origin point where I want it. No big deal. Use my mouse wheel to zoom out again. And I literally then hover over this little box and I can hold down my left mouse button, drag it to where I want. I've still got more room to make it a little bit bigger. So I shall do that again. Basically carry on with this process until I find the optimum size for the, the actual bit that I want to do. So once I've done that, all I need to do then is go back to this little box here, click OK, and it has now locked that SVG file into my sketch. So now I've completed that part, I don't need to add anything else to this. That is as simple as this design is going to be. So all I'm going to do now is go up to there where it says finish sketch, click on it. The sketch is now finished. This brings me now onto the, the second part. So basically what we've done here, if I hold shift and use my mouse wheel, I can then pan. I can look at it in a, in a different aspect. So if I, for instance, click on the front box, as you can see, I've got at the moment a flat drawing, if you like, in simple terms. That is all it is. It is literally what it says, a sketch. As you would sketch it on a piece of paper, I've sketched it on a 3D graphical background UI whatever you want to call it. So all I need to do now is turn this two-dimensional object into a three-dimensional object. Now you think to yourself, oh, this sounds awfully hard. It really isn't. So I do this in a number of stages. Now, for simplicity and ease of use to make this, because the overall goal of this is to turn this model into a multicolor object. I want my text and my image to be a different color from the coaster. So the easiest way to do this is literally hold down your shift key, hover over the item that you want to select until it highlights like it shows here. So if I take my mouse off, it goes to a light blue, hover the mouse over it, it selects it all and it turns dark blue. So I want to just literally click. Now it's highlighted. I have basically selected that portion of the model and I want to repeat that for the dog image as well. So again, holding down shift, if I hover over it, you can see I've got a black outline. It allows me to select it. The left mouse button to select the parts. If you can't actually select it, if you zoom in, you will be able to easily manage this. Some of the parts are smaller, so you'll need to get a little bit closer in to actually select them. Keep the shift key held down. If you don't hold the shift key down, it will basically only select one part and you'll have to start again. Make sure you don't miss any. So I have now highlighted all of the parts that I want. So to turn those from 2D into 3D, again, really, really, really simple. I'm going to go back up to this bar at the top, hover my mouse over the next icon along from Sketch, which is Extrude. And then as you can see, it now gives me more options. So I have a little box here with 0.00 millimeters in it. And if I actually look over the object, I've got an arrow. So now I can basically left click on the arrow, holding it down, and I can move it up. So it's defaultly moved up and snap to the first location at five millimeters thick. I don't want my coaster five millimeters thick. I want it three millimeters. So literally all I'm gonna do is type in three, hit return, and it is extruded. Those parts that are highlighted two, three millimeters thick, but you might now hit a panic station because you're thinking, well, where's all my other part of my design gone? It's just disappeared and all I'm left with is the outline of what I want. I want more than that, what happened? Don't panic. Scroll over to the left hand side of the screen on the little arrow next to sketches because that's what you've lost your sketch. Click on the arrow so it opens the drop down box and look, the sketch has been hidden. Simply click on it and it is there by magic. Very simple. Now we want to extrude that to the same thickness as we have made the other parts because if you're going to put a cup on it, everything needs to be flat. You don't want humps and bumps. And so I literally left click again, 
click on extrude, same process, highlights the arrow. So we'll drag the arrow up till it snaps. This time it snapped to four. So I'll just again change that to three. Now, before I click anything else, this is very, very important. You can see here, it's now put in this box as a default option, operation, and it's got cut selected. Now, cut does exactly what it says. If I select cut and click OK, it will basically cut through the parts that I've already done. I don't want it to do that. I want to create a new body. So basically what a new body is, is the first part that I've created is one block of items. I want this to be a separate block of items. So I'll make it a new body and I will click OK. So now I have a new body. And if I go back over to here, I can hide the sketch. And as you can see, we are left with a very, very simple rough design that is, you know, shows our, our lettering, shows our image, shows the shape of the object that we're wanting to actually make. So next up, we want bodies. Now to perform this clean and simply is really, really very simple. It's a case of you click on there and if you look now, everything is as I hover the mouse wheel over each of the body numbers, you'll see little bits highlight. So these are all the individual parts that we currently have within this model. Now, I know that the last part that I did is the actual coaster circle. So if I go on to the little eye icon next to body number 36 as it's named here, you can go in and rename this if, if you want to. I'm not going to do that in this, in this video. So I'll click on the eye and it hides that coaster. Now, if I get my cursor again and left click the mouse button, hold it down and, and drag a box over, it highlights all of those bodies as one. So really, really simple. So on my desktop, I've created a folder and I've named the folder Dog Coaster, just so I know what I'm putting in the folder. So then if I go back to Fusion, again, all I need to do now is on the file, because I've got these parts highlighted, I want to export them as one part. So I shall go down to Export, click on that, and it's going to open a box. Now it's got their name, Dog Coaster V1, because I've named the actual file Dog Coaster. So I want to rename that, so I basically I know which part is which. So I shall simply name this dog image. When you defaultly open this, it won't open as an STL file, but it's important that you select STL file because that is the file format that you're gonna open this in, in your slicing software. So then mine's currently set to my downloads folder. I don't want it on my downloads folder, so I'll click on the little box, go to my desktop, and then I'm gonna select the dog coaster folder that I created earlier on, and then I'm gonna Click open and there we have nothing in it. So dog image is gonna save in that folder. Click export, export complete. Export of dog image STL finished. So we can close that box. We don't need to look at that now. Click on the background of the screen and it's deselected everything. So now what I wanna basically export will be just the coaster body. So there probably is a quicker way of doing it, but I'm gonna just do it this way. Literally on every other one, I'm gonna turn them off so they are not visible. Just click on the little eye next to each one and it'll basically hide it from view. There we go. And as you can see, I'm left with this. This is it. So all I need to do now is basically highlight that and repeat the same process. So click File, Export, and this again is defaulted to Dog Coaster. I wanna name just this part Coaster. It is set to an STL file and it has already got save there my desktop dog coaster folder click export it is exported that my friends is the cad side done yes really that easy so now all i'm going to do is literally jump into my slicer i'm planning on printing this on the prusa xl depending upon which printer you have your slicing software might vary but i would imagine the process is going to be very very similar if not the same so all i'm going to do jump on and I'm going to add. So we've gone to desktop. Here's our dog coaster. I'm going to open that. I want both files importing at the same time. So again, to do that, really, really simple. Hold down your shift key, click on the top one first, click on the second one, 
click open. My slice has automatically realized that I've got a multi-part object detected. It's asking me multiple objects were loaded into the multi-material printer. Instead of considering them as multiple objects, should I consider these files to represent a single object having multiple parts? Well, yes, you should. And I really, really thank you sincerely for asking me this question because you just made my life a whole lot easier. So I shall click yes. And there we go. Now, it doesn't look like much at the minute. As you can see, it just looks like a, a green disc. But I'll just explain what's going on here. So I've got two extruders on the on the XL. My slicer has identified the fact I've got two extruders. So it has basically implemented one STL file to be dedicated to extruder one and the second one to be dedicated to extruder number two. We have them numbered here. Coaster is our STL1. The image is on extruder two. So basically what this will do when you are printing it is it will print the coaster first. It will leave out the lettering and the image part. And then when it swaps the tool head, it will then go in and fill in the image and the lettering. So literally click slice now, generating the G code, Bosch. Bosh. There we go, folks. You have a file in multicolor, ready to print. Export your G-code, send it to the cloud, Prusa Connect, whatever your chosen method may be. But really, it is that easy. It takes you no time at all. If you have artwork supplied by a customer, you can personalize these things infinitely. It really is that easy. That now is ready to basically select the colors of filament that you want to use in the print, load the file, click print, you have created a perfectly bespoke item designed purely by you for your customers on Etsy. You are not breaking any rules. This is your property, your file, your creation. It is as simple and as easy as that. So in conclusion for this video, I mean, if anybody wants to see a more in-depth CAD tutorial based on Fusion 360, please, please, drop it in the comments box below and we will certainly look at producing a video that gives you more in-depth detail into producing CAD items, CAD models ready for 3D printing because it isn't hard. You don't even need a high spec PC because Fusion is pretty much cloud-based so a lot of the load is taken away from your computer. You don't need anything fantastic and it will open up your Etsy store to a whole host of new opportunities to make more bespoke, customizable items for your customer, which is always a very, very good thing. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. And if you do have any questions regarding this video or any topics that we covered in the video, please drop them in the comments box below, along with your interest for us producing a more in-depth guide into Fusion 360. I hope you enjoyed it, found it informative and useful, Happy selling. That's it from me. Goodbye for now. We'll see you on the next one. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.